All right, so I'll tell you a story. Maybe it's two stories here. One story is, is that at my house here in Kfar Chabad, uh, last, it was actually last Friday, uh, we had a Brit here. A good friend of my wife's, her... In your house? What? In a Brit in your house? Yeah. Oh, wow. They have a, a porch and everything. Anyway, there weren't a lot of people here. There weren't a lot of people. There was, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 maybe. When, this week? What, I'm sorry? This week? It was last Friday. Oh. Anyway, there's a lot of stories involved in this whole business, but this is one of them. So the person who did the circumcision, it's called a mohel. <clears throat> usually in Chabad, they take somebody from Chabad to be the mohel, usually. And this fellow was not from Chabad. He was a Hasidic fellow. He was maybe, I don't know, in his 50s. Maybe, could even be in his 60s, but a healthy guy. <clears throat> you know, and a religious person and everything. He had a glowing face. He had a happy face. So he told the, the father and the grandfather of the child, they said, we want to give you money. He said, no, no, I don't take money for this. He said, you don't take money? I mean, you, you know, the... the it says that a moil is not supposed to ask for money, but you give him money, right? You give him money. I don't know how much they give him, a hundred dollars, but they give him money. It's also a very responsible thing. I you know that he's a the child, eight days old, he's doing this major <clears throat> operation on him. Okay. <clears throat> so he says, I don't take money. So he said, why? Why don't you take any money? He says, well, I want you to know, I work in diamonds, he says. He works in diamonds. This seems that this guy is a known person. <clears throat> and sometimes, some days he makes three bristles in one day travels all over the place. And if you know what happens in a bris, usually the, the father comes late, the child is late, the mother's late. You have to sit around that. There's one moil that he said he finished the whole entire Talmud, just waiting for the child to come, right? So that he wouldn't feel aggravated waiting. So it would be an opportunity to finish the whole entire Talmud. So it means he had to wait for like hundreds of hours. Who knows how long? Anyway, so he said that he doesn't take money. He doesn't take money for the bris. He said he works in diamonds, he works in the diamond district. And he said that uh, everyone else that he knows has ups and downs, they fell, they lose the money. And he says he never fell, he never fell. He goes to business, he does a business, he does it is, but the others, they stay, work up, wake up more early in the morning and they go, they stay late at night. <clears throat> and I'll tell you the story about, about holy money in a moment. He said, but he doesn't. <clears throat> He said there were times where he considered maybe taking money. I mean, people really like forced him, come on, we want to give you money. So we would he would tell them, you know, give it to charity or whatever. But on the other hand, you know, I guess they pay they pay his travel. You know, if he has to travel somewhere, you know, his, his, his taxi. And, you know, and sometimes he goes outside of Israel, travels outside. And sometimes he goes for Shabbat. He takes his wife with him and they stay in this place and they provide, but he makes the bridge. So he said that all of my friends, all, they all fell. Financially, in the worst times, I never felt. I never had enough to know. Never, everything was always up for me. He says, how can I deny that this is a blessing from God? And I just give, I mean, yeah, I'm sure he gives a massive amounts of charity. Now, here we go. So that's what I'm trying to say, that God does provide <clears throat> that a person cannot earn one penny more than what is coming to him. But, and I'll tell you one more story, and then I'll begin the story that I wanted to tell you. I saw this video where a person came to the Rebbe and he said to the Rebbe, he's relating the story, that he went to the Rebbe and he told the Rebbe, a religious guy, and he said uh, that he just loaned a tremendous amount of money to somebody that he knew and the person stole the money, took all the money. And now he's, you know, basically a poor person, or at least on his standards, he's a poor person. So he said, how should I look at this? You know, I'm a religious Jew. I do everything and I got, you know, I got cheated. So the Rebbe said, that money, is, you had to lose that money. It was decreed that you lose the money. Instead of losing that money on negative things, that you got sick, you had to make an operation, something bad. So you lost it in a way that didn't cause any pain to you except for financial. But the financial pain, that was already decreed. But it could have been that there would, there would be additional pain. So the Rebbe said, <clears throat> instead of just spending the money on operations and on negative things, so at least you did 
a mitzvah. You gave a person a loan, but he cheated you. That's it. That's his business. That's not your business. Okay, now the story. I have a teacher. I had a teacher. And his name was Rabbi Abba Pliskin, a blessed memory. He was good friends with Rabbi. He grew up together with Rabbi <clears throat> Mendel Putafas. They were very good friends together. And he also was in Russia, and he also had to run away from the police. He had to hide away from the, the, the KGB, whatever. <clears throat> so he told me that, that he heard from his teacher that there's two types of money. There's holy money, and there's regular money. There's holy money, and there's regular money. <clears throat> And he said that that's what it says that whatever a Jew does is God does opposite. It does, I mean, correspondingly. When we learn Torah, it says that God, Yoshev Olomit Kenegdo, that God learns Torah with us. That's what it says. It says, but when a Jew, Hasidim, they learn Lakuti Torah, so God already knows Lakuti Torah, right? You have to take this with a grain of salt. What does God do? Thursday, Thursday night, the Hasidim used to sit up all night and learn a Kluti Torah. That's what we learn in the morning. What does God do on Thursday night? They said, God, on Thursday night, he looks around, looks around, searches around for a holy <clears throat> $10 bill. It says a holy Pruta Kadosha, a holy bill to give to a Malamit Tinukas, to give to a teacher of children. Teachers of children are usually notoriously poor. Their wages are. God looks for a holy coin to give to a pupil. So he said, I heard that from my teacher, and I never understood it. I didn't understand it. So finally, he <clears throat> went to his teacher, and I think this was Ichi the Masvi, but I'm not sure. And he said, What does this mean, this holy coin? So his teacher said, I also didn't understand that. And I asked my teacher, and my teacher told me a story. He said that once Zusha of Anipoli, Zusha of Anipoli was a, a, a tremendous tzaddik, a holy person. His uh, approbation uh, is in the Tanya. Did you agree? So Zusha of Anipoli, he used to go to a town, <clears throat> and he would sit into a, in a synagogue, and he would sit there and he would learn. And he would learn without stopping. And when he was like really tired, he would lay down or just fall asleep on the book. And uh, someone would always notice him and they would come give him food. So once he came to a town and the person started giving him food, he would give him food to eat, but that person got sick. And one day went by, two days went by. And the third day he said, God, Zusha is hungry. Zusha is hungry. And God made a miracle. And there grew, grew in his mouth mana, man from heaven grew in his mouth. That was a miracle, and that's what he ate until this guy got better. This <clears throat> person got better, and he brought him food. So I asked a question, a normal question, which a normal person could ask and should ask. That's God had to make a miracle and make mana grow in his mouth. God could have just made it that somebody else noticed that he wasn't eating, and this guy was sick. And you know, Zusha, who's bringing you food? You know, who's bringing. Why didn't he, why did God have to do a miracle to make mana go in his mouth? So the answer is, is because no one in the town that had the merit to give him the food to eat. In other words, there's different types of food. There's regular food, kosher food, normal food. And then there's special holy food. The people that have the merit, people that are especially humble, people that are especially honest, people that are especially truthful people, whatever the merits are that God sees the merits of a person, this person who brought Zusha the food was the only one that had it. He said, from there I understood that there's different types of money. There's regular money, which you can make a million dollars out of, but it doesn't really have any depth and, how do you say, warmth and love in it. And there's holy money. And holy money, even a little bit of it, suddenly goes for good things. And you have money to give charity to others. Right? 
you have money to give charity and you have money and, and you, you're not lacking. For some reason, a miraculously it works out. That is the lesson of this week, Deut- the book of Deuteronomy, Devorim. We're going into the world, trust God, do your part, be partners with God, but God first on God's terms. Have a good Shabbos with Mashiach now. Amen. See you on Sunday, 8.15.